All right, we're live. We're well, live. Well, welcome to uh, Cafe Seas Over Two. Uh, this is Christina, my beautiful wife, and Javier. We are the authors of Balanced Love, which is right, right there. Here. <laughs> we just keep a you know copy handy at all times. Like, so what do we do? So we um, have a ministry that brings um, couples support and encouragement around putting their faith first in their relationship. And we are super excited today because we have an awesome, I think I'm going to call you guys like a spiritual power couple um, who are Clarissa and Jonathan. And we're just so thrilled to have them with us today. Um, and Javi's going to open up a little bit around what we're going to do. But I thought, I don't know, Clarissa and Jonathan, if you guys were okay with me starting up in prayer. Uh, before we do that, can can you do a little intro? I mean, I I oh so they're sorry. like my brothers and sisters, so I I don't want to introduce them because I think I'm going to add plenty of love. But if you can introduce yourself, uh, share what ministries you involve, and and you know what you guys do, and all the good stuff, that'd be great. Sure. Good. I'm Clarissa, <laughs> and this is Jonathan Chichioko, and we are married for almost five years this September. And uh, we represent Queen of Apostles Parish in San Jose, as well as Echoes of Worth, a Theology of the Body Ministry. And this is our daughter. Is our, who wants to oh! our daughters were like, are they gonna bring their daughter? And we're like, I don't know. And they're like, are we gonna be able to go? And we said, no. And they're like, but they get to bring theirs. And we said, yes, but you guys know. Yes. He was very curious to who we were talking to. Yeah, she'll probably be out if that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Great. Um, so shall I open with prayer? Open with prayer. Does that sound good? Great. Okay. In the name of the, the Father. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Dear Lord Jesus, we just want to thank you um, for this opportunity to share your love um, and build bridges with your faith. Um, empower our hearts um, and allow us to know what to say and when to say it in our relationships, Lord. And give us grace and mercy as we... Um, go through this challenging time of quarantine, sheltering in place at home. Um, we are very thankful for the opportunity to be with one another, but we also want to do right by you and um, make sure that we grow um, and serve you in our relationships, in our ministry at home, and our love for you, Lord. So um, we thank you. We um are so grateful for this opportunity to bring our faith um, up in this uh, purification and in this time of deep healing. So thank you um, in your name. Amen. Amen. Father, Son, All right. Holy Spirit. So, so in Cafecito for Two, we, uh, I think we were surprised by all the events that happened. And we decided to completely change it. We were producing videos and we're like, all right, guess what? We're just gonna we're just gonna go live and we're just gonna have conversations with with couples in the faith mm -hmm. and, and couples that contribute to to relationships, right? So I have a we have some questions for you and, and we just wanna make it a friendly mm -hmm. um flourish conversation here and, and see what comes out and at the same time. If anybody is watching, I think we have some comments here. Woo! Oh, yes. We have Amanda say hi and Jordan. Jordan say hi. So we say hi back to you. So what I encourage people, if you're watching us live and if you have a question, please post it. More than happy to, to answer that. Um, and I'm pretty sure uh, Clarissa and, and Jonathan can add to it. So please, by all means. And if you're watching it after it's live, then just write a question on the comments and we will get back to you. So, so one of the, uh, is that sounds good? Uh, Clarice, yeah, that sounds okay, good. great. I know, I know I, I speak too fast and you're like, okay, what, what is this guy all about? We just wanted to say thank you for inviting us to be yes. part of it. Oh, Absolutely. it's our pleasure. Yeah, our pleasure. Congratulations on your book and your ministry as well. And we, 
you guys are like a powerhouse to us. So, wow, oh, oh, you're I, so I, sweet. We, we look, we look at the opposite. I think you guys yeah. are a powerhouse, and we're learning from you. So we the are, love is right we here. are students to what you do as well. And your daughter is much calmer and well behaved <laughs> than ours. ours. So I just have to acknowledge that yeah. you're obviously excellent parents. This yeah. is clear. Yes, definitely. <laughs> They're doing a better job than we did. Yeah. <laughs> it's for sure. So just to start you up with, I have a question and I know you're uh, deeply involved in, in two really amazing ministries. And for us, uh, we see this is, is pretty much an opportunity to evolve and keep moving mm. forward. So if you can share with us what, what you have decided to, to do to keep the momentum, right? We cannot stop, right? Uh, there is so much uh, out there that we can do. And obviously, you don't meet in person, especially, especially mm -hmm. you, uh, Clarissa, that you have a youth group, you're doing confirmation. Mm -hmm. What are the ways that you decided to move forward so there's not a pause and we keep doing, you know, the, the ministry that, that we're doing? So if you can share with us, that'd be great. Mm. Yeah, that's a great question. I think first and foremost, something that I've learned right now is that you know, even though we're not going to Sunday mass and we're not meeting publicly for confirmation classes, I think what God has told us is that our prayer lives have not mm -hmm. gone and that we need to first and foremost continue our relationship with Jesus. And this is a great time to do that, you know, that we're staying home right now and we kind of have that time and that space to do it. Mm -hmm. um, so we need to fill up our own cups and fill up our hearts with Jesus. And then we bring that to the teens any way that we can right now. One medium is through social media and mm -hmm. sure. online. And then another way is through Zoom. We're using Zoom mm -hmm. as a, a platform for confirmation classes and, and check-ins with them right now. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's so important to not lose the momentum. And I think you you hit a really good point, which is, you know, filling up the cup right now. I think mm -hmm. we we were we were living such a busy lives. And now we have that time to really have that that prayer time that is so much needed for us. Right. And really connect in a deeper level. So that that's great points as well. Um Cindy Fo says hello everyone. We Ooh, say hello hi, back Cindy. to you with a blessing. <laughs> so um I wanted to ask you a little bit. One of the things that Javi and I, we were right on the same page with you guys about um this is an opportunity, like a spiritual reset. It's almost like I had a friend post recently. I'm looking at this time of quarantine as just a um an extended spiritual retreat. And I thought, wow, that's a really cool way yeah. to like reframe this. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, even though there's a lot of sacrifice in some ways or there's fear or um, you have to go without, you know, obviously we're very grateful. We don't feel like we feel very privileged that we're not on the front lines and that we're, we're able to be with our kids at home. Um, but there is this opportunity, right? Like you said, to um, really go deeper in your relationship with Jesus and, um, I was curious for you both. Um, do you see any specific examples or do you, can you share um, in a moment of grace that you've experienced during the quarantine, like in your relationship or your family? Um, it doesn't have to be extravagant, anything simple, but that's something we're asking ourselves all the time. Like, yeah. where do we see grace today or where yeah. do we see Jesus at work today? And it really kind of keeps our faith growing so yeah. i was just curious yeah i i think that um you know we're you know as as difficult as it is that uh you know the shelter in places is happening i think that you know as people of faith we were lucky that it started during you know a, a very important time of our faith where we're used to moderating things and you know kind of mm -hmm. Down and that's Lent. I think there was, um, there was a, you know, a, like a meme going around, and it was like, this is the, the lentiest Lent I've ever lented. 
And <laughs> very true. You know, and it really felt like we were in the desert. And I, I think that, you know, that alone is a grace, I think, to, you know, that mm -hmm. God, you know, knowing that this was going to happen, allowed it to happen in, in, a, in a time that we are, uh, we were already spiritually equipping ourselves. You know, we were, mm -hmm. you know, we were hunkering down spiritually while we were hunkering down, you know, at, at home with, you know, getting, you know, things ready with groceries, and just being prepared and all that. We were also spiritually pre preparing too. Um, and, you know, we don't know how long this is, is, is lasting, but, you know, this has been a very grace filled Lent and Easter season that we're now yeah. in. And, you know, now we, you know, we are Easter people with Alleluia as their song. And, you know, we mm -hmm. can, you know, be a bit more hopeful going into the rest of this quarantine. I think that's yeah, absolutely. One of the mindsets that, you know, we've been able to adapt, uh, adopt as a, as a family. It's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. And, and that's so, that's so true what you're saying. And also how God is, I mean, God is equipped us to do this, right? So we have everything. We have, we have the Holy Spirit to go through it. Um, and, and one of the blessings that I that I have received uh, with Christina is there's things that we thought that we already patch it. We're like, okay, I think we went through that two years ago. <laughs> I, th I think, yeah, I think we're doing this okay. This is marriage for and, you. <laughs> and now we're like, oh, guess what? Uh, we didn't really do we we just put a bandage in that mm. and we need to go back and really pray and discern a little bit more so we can move forward stronger than ever so it's it's, it's a healing process and at the same time uh that's where i feel grace every day that i'm noticing things that i need to take care of that i thought i did but i it didn't didn't mm -hmm. get a fix so yeah that's so true like we're we're at home and so things are kind of coming up to the surface whether it's dealing with yeah. that from like on our own or in our marriage so that's so true that these things are going to come out right now um and can you remind us how long you've been married oh yeah we've been married i'm like trying to remember oh. uh, we'll be married 14 <laughs> years this year's 14 years yeah and i you know it's funny i know you guys know because you have a little one because your marriage shifts a lot right when you have children um in an amazing way right kids are a huge blessing um but our girls are nine and twelve and this is this period of um shelter in place in some ways it's like a renaissance in our communication because we've we are communicating probably four to five times more yeah. than we because we just have more time together because you know our we're always running our kids to sports or school pickup or you know the drill and so our own you know jobs and stuff so we've noticed that um god's grace has just really blessed us too to even um, I felt like we were joking, like, wow, I feel like we're dating because we're having like conversations that aren't just based on necessity. Yeah. So <laughs> and and Jordan just said, congratulations, 14 years is something to be very proud of. Oh, thank we you, Jordan. Um, yeah, so but we we realize those things, and and for me it's a blessing that even though we're I think we are more vis more busy than we ever been, but we have time to deeply connect and deeply plan for the future we like i think our finances we are really getting into things that we haven't really realized in in terms of how much money you're spending on subscriptions for example and so i think for me it's a blessing that god really brought us to this kind of like mm -hmm. a still moment of saying hey uh, you need to equip you equip yourself because i'm gonna i'm gonna take you to a path that I need you to get stronger now because what's mm. coming ahead. Um, so I, I I see this as, as a blessing and mm -hmm. we're going through it. So, and I, like you said, communication, uh, we're doing very well with our preteen girls. I mean, <laughs> our our disable of, right, the way we go up and down, the, the yeah. tone of our boys have Yeah, our have highs changed. are not as high, but our lows aren't as low. So it's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. <laughs> I, mean, I have another uh, question uh, for you guys as well. And I think this goes back to to what we're talking. And I'll wait for, I'll wait for uh, 
Jonathan to get back. I'm pretty sure he's taking care of the little one, exploring everywhere, right? We got a delivery. Sorry about that. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. This is what happens, right? This is quarantine life. This is quarantine life. <laughs> you got to take care right. of the delivery because then yeah. I got to be back. That's a moment. That's a big moment. So, so another question that I have for you is how uh, Christina and I were – we it's funny we the other day i was working at my uh daughter's bedroom and then kitchen and then uh living room and then home office and yeah, the here girls and there. had their station so we have how have you ever able to i mean you need to have some separation obviously you're both working you're both doing what you're doing but how you we're able to kind of negotiate that. I don't want to call it negotiate, but manage, balance. kind of manage balance. You're both taking care of your of your daughter. So obviously, you know how how are you able to to do that, being at home uh, 24/7. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a challenge. It's still an ongoing challenge. Yeah, we're um, still figuring it out. Um, mm. I think one of the things that has because um, so I I. You know, I, I work, I'm working from home and I'm on a computer pretty much the whole day. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I, I'm, there are times that I'm really concentrating and, you know, I'm just working, you know, on our kitchen table right now. That's my, that's my work desk. Um, and I think one of the things that has really helped us is just trying to communicate to one another and like, and just kind of set expectations like, hey, I'm going to be in a meeting and you're mm -hmm. working on this for a while. So my head's going to be down for a little while, just trying to set expectations for each other um, to let, you know, let the other know, like, Hey, like I'm going to be in work mode. So I, mm -hmm. have my, my parent hat all the way on, you know, mm -hmm. so to speak, mm -hmm. um, you know, Clarissa um, has been uh, in a unique position, I, I think, because she's used to working and taking care of Kara you know, simultaneously. Multitasking. Multitasking. Yes. Multitasking. Yes. Uh, and I think, you know, for me, it's 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 hard because I know that it's, you know, she's struggling. And so I want to be there and I, I want to be available. But, um, you know, we've just, you know, been able to communicate like, hey, like, if you need time to work, then work. Because that's what would, mm -hmm. what would be happening if, you know, we weren't quarantined, you know just because we're home, like that doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, you have to change everything, you know, right. you make adjustments, but mm -hmm. you know, it's again, it's just setting expectations for one another. Yeah. Setting expectations, communicating um, about what yeah. hat we're wearing at what time, and then respecting those boundaries throughout the day. Yeah, that totally makes sense. I, I really appreciate what you said, Jonathan, too. It's like when you're in such an upside down um, kind of turnabout, you know, it's such an upheaval, especially initially. And then it's like, wait a minute, I don't need to like throw everything away, right? We do need structure and some routines. And and it's been really healthy for us, too, because our girls are on virtual school schedules. And especially our older, it's really like 8.20 to 3.20. She's got a noon lunch break and got to get her food at noon. So it helps us, too, to be able to almost sometimes say, okay, the morning I'm free, afternoon I'm booked. And like you said, really set each other up ahead of time. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. I I kind of, I I surprised uh, Christine. I got to hold the good news because before I used to text her and say, hey, guess what happened? This happened and this and that. But now I just go and look for her like, hey, guess what? <laughs> Christina's like, all right, I'm working. Okay, please. Uh, yeah. I'm like, okay. <laughs> can you see I'm that? Like, okay, so I gotta, minutes. I gotta buy my time, and I'm like, okay, that's <laughs> fine, that's fine. I gotta wait. I gotta wait for dinner. So, mm -hmm. so that's the boundaries that we keep in. But we, we moving around, so it's, it's fun. You know, a lot of my clients go, uh, what are you today? I go, I'm in my daughter's bedroom. It's a mess. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Yeah. Um. So the next question, we only have two more. So just so you know, um, this last, this second one or second to last one is just, um, I know in the beginning, especially, um, for me, um, I have struggled in the past with anxiety. And so in the beginning I felt just more, um, triggered or like doubtful, or I just had to really go to God. I had to take a lot of long walks and, 
um, go to prayer. Um, Javi and I right now, we, we were doing kind of a mutual prayer practice, but now we really have our own individual prayer practice in the morning. Um, and I just really needed that silence, that time to kind of start my day. And I was just curious, like when you talk about your prayer life or um, any sort of spiritual sustenance that you could point to, I know you mentioned the Lent um, practices, but I'm curious, like where your faith has come through for you in terms of that um, for this quarantine time? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, it's interesting because Jonathan was watching some of the news today. I think that was today. No, it was yesterday. Yesterday. And he said, oh, you know, you put on the news and you watch it for a couple of minutes and it's so depressing and it's, mm. it's full of all these negative things. And I think what's gotten us through is having that personal prayer time. And I know for mm. my what it's looking like right now is, and I got this from another Catholic speaker. Um, she said, if you want to love reading the Bible, do it this way. And she said, read two chapters of the Old Testament, one chap, one Psalm, and then one chapter of the New Testament. So, cool. you know, instead of going, you know, chapter by chapter, mm -hmm. yeah, read it. Uh, different parts at the same time and I've started that and I actually really love reading it that way and I feel like I'm getting a lot of spiritual nourishment um, by just reading scripture and just being reminded of how much God loves me and mm. how much he has saved his people throughout generations and generations mm. same right now and holding fast to that promise um, mm -hmm. especially during this time and I think for Jonathan yeah well I think that well well for one thing you know when you're you know being home uh, you know sheltered in place and all like obviously structure to your day is really important mm -hmm. and I think by doing so it kind of puts a magnifying glass as yeah. today to okay what 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 am i actually spending my time on because mm -hmm. you know like, sometimes like it's hard it's hard to decipher those things when you're especially if you like commute to work and you know work isn't always the same but you know i it i i can't believe it's friday that's how how similar these days have kind of <laughs> been yeah. to one another and i think with that kind of structure like it 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 reveals to you where God is lacking, you know, in your day. And I think one thing that has helped me is um, just having silent prayer time uh, to just be a child before God. You know, um, you know I look at, um, you know, I look at my daughter and, and I see like, you know, how, the, the innocence that she has, but also the joy that she has is attributed to just the fact that she's just ready to just, you know, be our daughter and she's ready for us to be her parents. And mm -hmm. I think we are um, more attuned to God the Father when we choose to be his children. And so mm -hmm. we're able to make that choice daily uh, and just to kind of bask in the presence of our Father mm -hmm. in silence or you know, through scripture, um, I think that sense of trust and hope in, you know, a father, a God that, um, you know, has a great plan for us, that hope is restored more and more. Um, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes, you you know, you know, we talked about things slowing down and, and all that. This is a, a perfect time to just be still and yeah. be a child. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, either an hour or five minutes. Um, and I sometimes ask Jonathan, like, have you made your appointment with Jesus today or your meeting Aww. time with Jesus mm. today? And it's just like, just take five minutes and just, um, just be in silence or just receive love from him. Mm. That's beautiful. That's so beautiful. Thank you for that. That was beautiful. It really answer the uh, fifth questions that we have for them. The last question. The last question. You kind of, it's funny, you, um, you were. That's the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> uh, 
w- one thing that I want to add, and, and it happened to me today by I got invited to join um, a men's group that they're all over the United States. And they say, hey, you want to you want to participate today? And and I said, well, what what kind of faith are there? Because it's a faith group. I'm thinking, I don't know. Are you going to have different religions? And we got there. There was 11 men and they're all Christians. And it to me, I was telling Christina, it was the most beautiful hour that I spent with men. And we we share the gospel and we share what we're doing as, as fathers, mm-hmm. as husbands and how we moving together. And I think it's so beautiful because if if I wasn't at home, I don't think I will join at 11 o'clock on a Friday and meet this strange man. And now, <laughs> now I'm so connected with them and now we're sharing books and they're, hey, read this, read that, let's get together more often, let's do this, let's have this conversation. And I think everything is for a purpose, right? God is, is creating this for a purpose. And mm. these magical things happen, like you said, Jonathan, when you stay still and, and really just go along with it because a lot of beautiful things came out. And out of that conversation, it made my day. I was telling Christina, I look like a like a kid coming out of a mm-hmm. playground. Christina's like, all right, okay, cool. I go, you, you won't believe it, you know? And th- these people are from Ohio, Florida, New York, I mean, Oregon. Nobody was from California. I'm like, I'm the only Californian guy here. And I had no idea. I, I thought it was a, just a, a different faith backgrounds, but they're all Christian. Yeah. And, and it was so beautiful connecting with other men and talking about what we're doing in our families to move through this. And it was, it was really fulfilling. So, yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Jonathan. No, no, go ahead. I was, uh, I guess I was just going to say that, you know, it, it, it makes sense that, you know, things like zoom and, you know, WebEx are so popular right now because people are craving, you know, uh, mm-hmm. communication and community and um you know as you know not even just uh you know being quarantined but just just mar- being married in general i think it's 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 really important to to reach out and um speak to people that are you know going through something very similar mm-hmm. like like we've been uh you know we've we've been having this uh text thread with a group of friends of our a group of friends uh, that we have from across the country and uh, most of them are married um, or in a relationship. And uh, it, it's just nice to kind of relate to other couples too, that are going through it. Even just speaking to the two of you now, it's just, mm-hmm. it's really like uh, refreshing and rejuvenating to um, just to communicate with like people that are just in the same boat as you, you know? Absolutely. And I really appreciate that, Jonathan. Yeah, like even to just have this level of depth of a spiritual conversation, right? With to apply your spiritual lens to this like intense time. Um, it's so healing and comforting. Yeah. And I want to thank you both for that. I also wanted to say So I, I just want to sorry to interrupt oh, you. We, we have time? A, we have a no, no oh, time either. Oh. There's no time. This is <laughs> last time. So we have a question from from uh, Jordan. Jordan, uh, if you want to read it. Sure. You mentioned that communication has been key for both, for you both while working from home to make sure you're aware of each other's state of mind. I imagine that communication is also very important in your marriage as an overall theme as well. As someone who's engaged and set to be married soon, could you maybe give a few tips and advice on how you've managed to build such a strong marriage and make sure it's always centered around God. Thank you. So thank you for the question. I what, you, guys, you guys want to take a stab or whatever works? Well, I would say get um, get Christina and Javier's book. <laughs> <laughs> You're sweet. Definitely. Um, yeah. Do you want to add anything? Um, well, first, congratulations on being engaged. Um, I think... Yeah. I think w- one of the things that has really helped Clarice and I is that um, we have, um, you know, we were friends for a, a while before we uh, got into a relationship. And I think, in, and she was actually a, a very close confidant of mine, you know, um, you know, up and, you know, up until, you know, we started to date. And so I think, uh, you know, that, that helped greatly, I think, into our marriage is, 
you know, how are already having established that, uh, that friendship. Um, but I think in addition to that, um, I don't know, <laughs> what did you say? Yeah, I think, um, having that personal relationship with God is, is really important. And then mm-hmm. sharing that with one another, whether that's having your own, um, your prayer time together um and you know we like in the past we've journaled together um we've done like an examination of conscience together to know where Mm -hmm. we you know lacking throughout the day or where we where we did see you know christ in each other throughout the day um and yeah i know uh what do you Oh, I, I, this actually ties into what I was going to say earlier, um, is just that I think, well, two things, I think for me, the biggest lesson in communicating with my husband was recognizing because of my own patterns, um, that he can't read my mind. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I do need to really be forthcoming. Right. And, um, sometimes that is uncomfortable. So being able to sometimes lean on God's um, confidence and strength to, to, you know, sometimes get the courage and just keep going at it. Um, it doesn't always get easier right away, but if you stick with it, it does. Um, that's a good thing is like we all are learning, right? Our whole lives, how to communicate more and more. Um, but the other thing I was going to say is that I really try and be a champion for Javi's spiritual growth. And he, I feel, is also a real advocate and champion for my spiritual growth. And so today we took a walk after he had the men's group experience. And I said to him, you know, and it's very similar to what you were saying, Clarissa, about feeling God's love, like receiving Jesus's love and and that unconditional, right, um, place in his heart. And so uh, Javi was kind of going on about all these men and how amazing they were. And I'm like, and you and you are really admirable. You're an admirable Christian man too. Like you're an upright, right person. And um, and then I also kind of reflected back to him that wow, you really needed that. You know, like this is really awesome. This is I'm so I had said something along the lines of like, I'm really proud of you that you gave that to yourself, like that hour to like connect with them. And I think sometimes, I don't know about you guys, but I've struggled. Be like, oh, especially with having kids, like, oh, I don't, it's not the right time to pray, or I got to go do this instead, or this is more pressing, or, and just really trying to be the best guardian for each other's like time with Jesus. I think we can rally each other and, and boost each other. And that, and that really does um, lend itself to really awesome communication, I yeah. think, over time. Yeah. And and one simple thing that I can share for for Jordan and everybody listening is I I'm applying this and this is very simple. Uh, I'm I'm starting to thank Jesus like constantly. I say thank you Jesus for this beautiful rainy day. Thank you Jesus for this sun. Thank you Jesus mm-hmm. for this chair. Thank you Jesus for uh, my health. The cup the cup of coffee that I'm drinking. Thank you, Jesus, for I'm breathing. I'm I'm be able to create. I'm be able to be your messenger. Thank you. And the more I think, the more mm-hmm. great uh, gratitude is just around me. And I see how much God loves me because you start counting all the things that you're thankful for, and you're like, oh my goodness, I am rich. I am like you know, look at all this. Uh, stuff mm. that Christ is providing for me. And I think in a relationship now, especially you're engaged, you're about to get married, and, and obviously you're going through very strange and and challenging times, it's just being grateful and thanking the tiny things that you you don't mm. think when you had your busy life. I think that will do that because eventually – Two days from now, you're going to see the difference. Obviously, it's not going to happen in a half an hour. You can say 20 thank yous, the like, but it will happen eventually. So, and we have another question. I will, uh, you guys are open for another question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, great. Awesome. Awesome. You want to read the question? Sure. It says, um, this is from Mandy. Hi, Mandy. It says, earlier you guys mentioned that this has been a blessing to have this time to reset and reconnect with God each other and your kids, when life gets crazy, busy and insane, are you able to recognize when you need to slow down and spend more time with God and one another? 
What do you do to reset? Um, so I'll take a stab and then I'll, I'll let you guys go for it. I think um, for me, um, it's definitely more challenging when things are busy. Um, we're hoping that we can make some different decisions when we do go back about like you were saying, Jonathan, like you start discerning about how you spend your time and you're like, wait, why am I doing that? You know, so perhaps in the future, um, we hope to pave a way that it's not as difficult um, to, to kind of get grounded in God. But I think going to church is a huge part of it. I feel like every Sunday um, is a huge opportunity to do a reset. Um, I notice that if for whatever reason, if we're, we don't go to church or if things get, there's a conflict, it has a huge impact um, on the week and that day, but also um, going forward. Um, I also think that... Um, for me, I really need to have at least, like you said, Clarissa, like five minutes um, minimally, like by myself. Sometimes I go to the, into the bathroom. I have two places I pray alone. One is in the bathroom, which is like a mommy staple, right? And then the second is we have a big closet and no one really knows when I'm in there. Like, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. I just close the door and um, that's really sort of so when I feel like my heart rate is increasing or I'm feeling really scattered, um, I try and take deep breaths and I just actually isolate with God. Um, and from there in that moment, I get like usually some guidance or rejuvenation of what I need to do next. But to be honest, it's a moment by moment thing, really. Did you guys want to yeah. offer up anything? Well, um, I think, um, you know, because when you're, you know, being especially at this at this time when we're we're together all the time, it's it's very easy to kind of say, you know, we're with each other and that's it. We're fine. Things are fine. But um, but then I think it's it's also a good practice to uh, actually explic explicitly say, okay, the kids are down. You know, it's our time to put down our devices mm -hmm. and have a conversation, just be together, do an activity together, whatever, you know, stick to your, your, your date night. If you, you know, if you're able to, um, things like that. I think it's just, that is such, um, a big part, I think of kind of staying sane as, as a married couple is like making mm -hmm. sure that you're, um, savoring that time together mm -hmm. and then of course just remembering the third person in your relationship which is mm -hmm. god and you know like you know like we have said so much you know throughout this whole um stream is just spending time with with him and, and explicitly you know setting time aside for him and yeah. you know because you can tell you know in your marriage when one of those communication lines isn't isn't, isn't yes yes know. yeah it could be being scattered or we talked about this earlier just losing your peace mm. I lose my peace I get more I'm more irritable and my tone is more um, maybe mean <laughs> or harsh and I think it's you know we try to just take a second and let the other person know what we need so if mm. it's five, five minutes to like go upstairs and be by myself and just like breathe right now. Or um, I need to like just take a shower because I I just need some sort of relief from my stress. Um, and so I think it's important to just let each other know. Like you said, Christina, we can't read each other's minds. Um, so mm. we let each other know what we need in those times of stress and take care of ourselves and one another. Yeah. And I, oh, I, I so relate to everything you guys are saying. I think one of the skills I've learned, you know, um, as I do sometimes had, especially earlier on, but still like wrestle with anxiety is, um, Javi would notice it and name it for me, but it wasn't helping me in that moment. It was actually kind of sometimes exacerbating it. So I had to kind of work to like beat him to it. I mean, obviously he became aware and, and very empathetic about 
not like mentioning it. But then I could say, you know what? I'm feeling anxious right now. I need to take a minute. And so it's almost like, I don't know if you guys feel this way, but like you can get a new groove in your relationship or like a new groove of communication. And so that sets up like a different positive pattern. So then I can just be like, you know what? I'm feeling a little angry. And then he's like, oh, okay. Are you going to like take a bath? Are you going to like take a walk? And so he already knows like that's the signal. And then I'm, and he knows at some point, like I need to do something. And um, we had a, a week ago, actually, we had another interview and I had this like crazy headache, you know, like those headaches you just can't get rid of. You're like trying, you know, just, just sat with me all day. And I told him before, he's like, but we have a live, you know, we have a stream, whatever. And I said, I just need 10 minutes to lay down. Like I just, and you know what? It just did the trick. Like just by giving myself and him allowing me that, that, that 10 is minutes. So kind. That is yeah. So kind. You just, it was like gone. So that's awesome. Uh, great. This is super cool. Uh, Jordan said, thank you so much for your answer. That's what we're here for. And I just want to point out, um, I think we mentioned this in, in our uh, last week episode. Uh, we heard news of a couple couples breaking their engagement because we are, you know, they're for whatever reason, maybe they're going through a lot of stress. They don't know the unknown. Please, you know, before you make that decision, we're here to help you. So talk to us you. and we can pray for you. And at the same time, mm -hmm. I mean, maybe we don't have all the answers, but at least we can give you support. And we can guide you to someone so you can make uh, a better decision than just to go through this alone em alone emotionally like that so so i i i don't want to catch you by surprise or anything but they said that you're going to play a song for us or not <laughs> if, yeah. you're if you're comfortable we just have no musical talent and we admire yours so we what? thought we'd invite you to but thank you for being entertaining like just being willing humoring us well clarissa tipped me off so uh she was like, what can you play? I was like, uh, I don't know. So we'll kind of wing it, I guess. Well, um, we'll probably, you want to, you're going to sing too, right? Sure. Okay. Um, oh, this is so cool. <laughs> I know. This is super cool. This is like the first time ever, Cafecito for Two, we had like a live, live performance. Live performance. This is so exciting. We're honored to be your first musical guest on your show. Oh. Awesome. <laughs> um. So we're, we're going to sing uh, a song uh, by uh, Matt Marr called uh, uh, Lord, I Need You. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's just an appropriate song right now. Uh, but, you know, just just to remind us that, you know, we're so small, you know, and we're, we're children God, that need their father, just like Kara apparently needs her mother right now. But, <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, it's just a just a song to kind of put us in a posture of receiving uh, God's love and, and peace. So here we go. Lord, I come, I confess that when you I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour. My one defense, my righteousness, oh God, how I need you. The sin runs deep, your grace is more, where grace is found, it is where you are. And where you are, Lord, I am free. Only this is Christ in me. And where you are, Lord, I am free. Only this is Christ in me. 
is Christ in me. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God. My righteousness, oh God, how I need you. You're my one defense, my righteousness, oh God, how I need you. That was super good. Awesome. Oh, beautiful. Man, that was so beautiful. Yeah, that hit wow. the spot. That wow. hit the spot. Really powerful. That was so good. So that's good. That's what we all need to hear what right a gift. now. What a gift. Thank you so much, you guys. Yeah, we thank you so much. Um, we're gonna uh end in prayer. And you just wanna I just wanna tell you how grateful I am. Um I'm I'm super grateful that I I've been serving with Clarissa and, and we have beautiful stories to share for another episode <laughs> and, and, and beautiful that I know such a beautiful Christian man right there, Jonathan. So very beautiful that uh, I'm very grateful that I know you guys. It has been an honor to have you. I think you're adding a lot of great messages out there. Mm -hmm. And and I think we adding a lot of hope for people out there that, they're in despair and they yeah. are with a lot of anxiety and and worry uh, on the outcome. And I think we brought we brought um, Jesus to them uh, because Jesus is working through us, so we can deliver the message. So thank you very much for being part of this. And, and yeah, this it's really a blessing. Yes. Thank you, you so wanna, much. You're very Did you welcome. guys want to pray us out? Oh sure. Kara, do you want to pray? Aww, yay. She's our like grand finale. Yes. Look at her. So beautiful. Look at that angel. Beauty. Sing us out too. Aww. She's like. Yeah. Okay. All right. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Dear Lord, we just uh, want to take a moment to breathe you in, Lord. Remember, Lord God, that you are here. You are here with us. Lord God, we we thank you for this time together to uh, share all, in all the many ways that you have blessed us, Lord God, as, uh, as your children. Um, we thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity to speak together virtually and the technology that we're able to uh, to leverage to to bring uh, a message of hope and love and peace um, to everyone that needs it that needs to hear that to be reminded lord god of how good of a father you are to us how great you um are um to your people and um and we just thank you lord god that um in this time Right now, Lord God, that you are um, you are guarding us, you are protecting us, you are watching over us, especially in in a time of uncertainty. Um, Lord God, you are still finding ways to remind us, Lord God, that uh, that you are um, you are taking care of us. Uh, we just ask you, Lord, that as we continue to live our lives and um, cope with the the challenges of uh, not just married life and family life, but just uh, being followers of Christ, mm -hmm. that um, we uh, can always uh, have the courage to um, to turn to you, our Father, to receive your love, to receive your guidance, and to receive your um, your guidance through one another as well, um, through uh, through the people around us, through friends or family. Um, 
whoever they may be, Lord God, the community that you place um, around us, oh Lord God. And we just ask for your Holy Spirit to lead us to the path that um, you want us to follow and um, for our guardian angels to protect us along the way. And of course, like Lord, we entrust all these uh, all these things to to you um, and to the Holy Family, Lord, as well. And uh, we ask this and pray in your most holy name. Amen. 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 Oh, oh thank so you. beautiful. That thank was you. Gorgeous. So, thank you, Jonathan. Thank you very much. I know you're taking care of the little one. Thank you for doing this and taking care of that angel over there. And for everyone watching and whoever participated, thank you. Like I said, if you're watching this uh, later on, please, if you have any questions, write us. We're here to support you. We're all happy to and, pray uh, for you. We're we're back next Friday at 6 p.m. live. We have another couple coming up. And uh, we here. And Clarissa and Jonathan, we may circle back. That's and ask right. You to be that's right. Guests. Because that, you, <laughs> I, fell in love, I fell in love with that song. I fell in love with that song. <laughs> so we love you guys. Blessings and so uh, take care. Stay healthy. Thank so you. Bye. Bye. God bless. Bye. God bless.